Let's try an example to design a continuous solid slab which is spanning in one direction. The figure here shows a four span slab which is used to support a variable load of 3 kN per meter square plus the floor finishes and the ceiling loop of 1 kN per meter square. The 3 kN per meter square is a QK and the 1 kN per meter square is a GK. The characteristic strengths for the concrete are 25 and for steels is 500 N per mn square. It is assumed that the end span is simply supported. The exposure class for the concrete is XC1 and the rebar size is 10 mm. You are asked to design the slab. You may pause the video for a while for you to work out the solution. To solve these questions, first you need to determine the thickness of the slab. Refer to table 7.4n, which is this table. An end span continuous slab will be this one. Since you are designing for the slab, normally the reinforcement bar are lightly stressed, therefore the basic L per D ratio it will be 26. Provide 30% higher allowance for the L per D ratio. You will get L per D ratio as 33. With that, the minimum depth of the beam is estimated to be 136 mm. Let us try to use D equals to 140. The exposure class is XC1. By referring to table 4.4n and the recommended strength class of 4, the required cover for durability is 15. Adding 10 mm as the deviations, the nominal cover will be 25 mm. With that, you are able to determine the overall thickness of the slab by using these equations, which end up to be 170 mm. Next, you analyze the action acting on the member. The permanent actions consist of the permanent load plus the self-weight of the slab. The self-weight of the slab is obtained by multiplying the thickness with the unit weight of the concrete, which eventually you will obtain 4.25 kN per meter square. Therefore, your total permanent actions it will be the summation of these two. The variable was given, which is 3 kN per meter square. Therefore, your design force which is equals to 1.35 times 1.5 for GK and QK times 4.5 meter, you will get 52.1 kN. You need this design load for you to compute the moment and shear load acting on the member based on the table given in BS. Referring to table 3.12 in BS8110, the maximum moment it will be 0.66 FL and the maximum shear load it will be 0.6 F. With that, these ratios are obtained for computations of design moment and the design shear force. The design moment is now found to be 20.2 kN meter as for the design shear load is 31.3 kN. Next, you design for the main reinforcement bar. By using the K equations, you will get K equals to 0 0.0412 
This k is later substituted into the equations to find the lever arm D and it is found that the lever arm is 0.96 D which is greater than 0.95 D a maximum of 0.95 D is allowed therefore you will use Z equals to 0.95 D and the lever arm is found to be 133 mm substitute the moment and substitute the Z into these equations you will be obtaining the AS required you need to provide an reinforcement bar so that your AS provider is greater than the AS required. In this case, we provide H10 at 200 mm center to center spacing. Next, we check for the deflections. Substitute the required area into these equations to obtain the percentage of the reinforcement bar and also find the row node it is found that the row is less than row node therefore this equation is being used since that we are using the slab for n supported slab therefore the k it will be equals to 1.3 based on the table substitute the relevant equations you will get the L per D limit as 54.8 the actual L per D is obtained by dividing the actual span with the actual depth of the slab it is found to be 32.1 which is less than the limit therefore the deflection is considered acceptable next you check for the shear resistance First, you need to obtain the K. Substitute D into the equation for K. You will find the K is more than 2. Then you should use K equals to 2. And then also find the row 1. The row 1 is obtained by dividing the amount of reinforcement bar provided with the BD. And you obtain 0.0028 substitute these numbers into the equations in order for you to obtain the shear resistance of the concrete without reinforcement the shear resistance is found to be 64.3 kN it is later to be checked with the shear resistance minimum of the concrete by using the equations which is found to be 40.5 kN with that you know that the shear resistance of the slab is 64.3 kN compared with the shear load so no shear reinforcement is required as the shear load is less than the VRDC Next, you need to check with the minimum amount of reinforcement bar. There are two equations for you to do so. This is the first equation and this is the second equation. Both give you around 186 or 182. The amount of reinforcement bar provided are always greater than this. Therefore, the minimum amount of bar area is acceptable also we know that the transverse reinforcement is not really meant for load resistance therefore the transverse reinforcement bar can be provided with the AS minimum in this case H10400 is provided as the area of 196 is greater than the minimum as required you may check for the maximum bar area which is equals to 4% of the cross-sectional area of the slab but as the cross-section of the slab is normally relatively large so normally we will have the maximum bar area pass 
Next, you need to check for the maximum power spacing for the slab less than 200 mm. The spacing limit for the main and transverse reinforcement are given here. Substitute the relevant numbers into the equations. You will get the maximum spacing of the bar as 400 and 450 mm for the main and the transverse reinforcement. The provided reinforcement bar for the main and transverse reinforcement is 200 and 400 mm respectively, which is less than the maximum allowable spacing. Therefore, the spacing requirement is considered acceptable. Last, you need to provide details of the slab section. The requirements for curtailments are given here. Based on the requirement, you can work out the amount of reinforcement bar required and the positions where curtailment can be done. The transverse reinforcement bar of H10400 it will be the same throughout the entire sections. But for the main reinforcement bar of H10200, it can be reduced to 50% at the both end and also at these regions. Therefore, you can reduce it by increasing the spacing to 400mm for the H10 rebar. It is required with 25% of the mid-span reinforcement bar at the corner of the slab. However, this 25% is likely leads to the maximum allowable spacing and also the minimum bar areas to be exceeded. Therefore, we can just simply provide it with H10400mm similar like the transverse reinforcement bar. In this case, H10 400 mm is provided in both directions, the longitudinal and the transverse directions at this region.